Welcome everybody to the Shop Notes Podcast. I'm not Phil, but that's John. And wait, that's a girl. That's right. Today we are graced by her grace, the queen of the shop, Becky Kralichek. This is episode 115. Uh, and today we're going to thank our sponsor, Woodcraft. This episode of the Shop Notes Podcast is brought to you by Woodcraft Supply. Since 1928, Woodcraft has been outfitting woodworkers and their shops with everything they want and need. Whether you're looking for the world's best tools or the most amazing wood for your next project, Woodcraft has been helping you make wood work for more than 90 years. Visit woodcraft.com or shop in one of more than their 70 stores nationwide. Then go make something cool. Okay, so Phil's not here. So Trace Amigos get to make up what we're talking about today. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had a couple, like I had a couple ideas. Um, yeah. So I don't know, like, what are your guys' thoughts now, Becky? I know you are an avid um, joiner of the Des Moines Woodworkers Guild meetings. You know, you don't ever uh, miss yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen every single one. Yeah, every single Des Moines Woodworker <laughs> Guild meetings. Uh, I guess the question is, John, have you ever been to one of the Des Moines Woodworker Guild meetings? I don't believe that I have. Okay. So, And I, the only reason I ask is, uh, so yesterday, last night, um, I was invited. Not I, I wasn't invited last night. Last night I went um, <laughs> to the mm -hmm. Omaha Woodworkers Guild uh, for their meeting. So uh, they reached out to me and uh, invited me to come out. So I went out uh, to Omaha yesterday and had dinner with a couple of the guys there and a couple of drinks. And we went and did um, their demo and their meeting. Uh, and uh, guys, like I do these occasionally and I know Phil does them occasionally as well. These guild meetings are so fun. Like, mm -hmm. how do I, you get invited to a guild meeting? Is it like a, um, like a secret secret society? Yes, yes. You have to be on that secret black book, you know, that all the mm -hmm. guild leaders have, and there's you gotta once know the, they the secret once, knock. Yeah, once they leave the uh, the guild leadership position, they get taken out. So, mm. yeah. So that yep. book doesn't ever go. No. Uh, so this, you know, when we started kind of consolidating down our office. Um, there was a bunch of tools. Uh, you guys know this. Our, read, our listeners probably don't. Mm -hmm. But there was a bunch of tools that we needed to get rid of because we just had a lot of doubles and we, don't, we didn't have the space for everything like we were storing. So one of the tools I sold, um, I sold to a gentleman uh, from the Omaha Woodworkers Guild. And kind of in messaging back and forth, he's like, hey, you know what you should do? You should really come out and do a demo for us. And, you know, they, they always look... They don't necessarily have a demo, I think, every meeting, or maybe they do every meeting, uh, but they don't always have outside people do it. Um, usually somebody internally does it. So if somebody there at the at the meeting or in the guild is very into you know, a particular type of woodworking, a lot of times they'll do a demo on that. So um, next, the next Omaha Woodworker Guild meeting, there's a one of the uh, older gentlemen there. He has a old circular sawmill, so like one of the big round blades, you know, that you tie somebody to a timber mm -hmm. and run them through it in mm -hmm. the cartoons. Mm -hmm. uh, he has one of those, so they're going to go do that demo at his place. Um, but occasionally they like to bring in outside people just for different perspectives and stuff. And it's like, oh, hey, it's only a you know, it's a two hour drive, two and a half hour drive from here. Um, so yeah, I went out and did that with them. Um, did a demo on joinery planes so talking about not necessarily bench planes but planes for joinery instead um and it was super fun i mean you know there's probably 40 45 people that that joined the meeting um or came to the meeting um i would the only thing i was disappointed about like two of the guys wives made like snacks for everybody and <laughs> I know it will shock you guys, but I spent too much time talking. I did not get one of the snacks. <laughs> and there was like these, I know, there was like these oatmeal raisin bars that looked amazing. And I did not get one. So, but no, it was, it was super cool. Like there's a Des Moines Woodworkers meeting um, next week that I will be doing a demo at. Um, so it's just, it's, it's fun to get to, to see all of these different groups and how the different 
guilds kind of work. I mean, they're all they're all similar, and they all know each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I was talking to um, Patrick, the uh, the guild president, and they are actually having. Um, Chris Schwartz is coming in in a couple weeks to do a two day demo for them on building the anarchist. Uh, I don't know if he's doing the anarchist tool chest. I think he's doing the Dutch tool chest. I'll have to I'll have to verify that. But he'll be in Omaha for two days doing that. Um, so if anybody is interested in that, uh, reach out to me um, on Facebook or uh, YouTube, and I will put you in touch with Patrick um, for getting signed up for that demo in Omaha. Um, but I was talking to Patrick, and he's like, oh, yeah, I know. You know, I, I emailed Chuck, the president of the Des Moines Woodworkers, to see if anybody was interested in um, joining the demo from Des Moines and just driving over and stuff. So it's just kind of a cool community. You know, I'd like to know from our listeners if if they're guild members of their local guilds, because I know there are some really big ones in the U.S. Like, yeah, I've, I've got to know more. Like, is there is there like a national conference that like not, gets together, it, like a beauty so, contest okay. of guilds? No. So, <laughs> so, <there's>, so <laughs> you make, you make a really good point, Becky, because in the wood turning world, um, the AAW, the American Association of Wood Turners, uh, they host national symposiums. So they're like. All the smaller AAW chapters have their own meetings. So the, the Des Moines AAW chapter has its own meeting every month. Um, but then once or twice a year, they hold these national symposiums where all the clubs get together. Wow. I don't think there is. You might be onto something. See, this is why we have you. <laughs> Do they have like no. rival factions with their own like leather jackets? And <laughs> yeah, it's like so. you get them all together and they start <laughs> uh. warring. I think so. I think so. So it's it's funny because there are Omaha's much larger than Des Moines is, right? Like I didn't know that um, until I was really having I, I I haven't spent a lot of time in Omaha um, until I was having dinner with with everybody yesterday, and they're like, oh yeah, we have Omaha is like 1.6 million people, and I really? think De, yeah, like the Des Moines Metro is like I mean if you include like Skankany and uh altoona <laughs> and all those yeah i think you're i think we're at like eight hundred thousand. like i don't think we're yeah. above a million yeah i thought like des moines and omaha were pretty similar sized so that surprised me that they're that I, much bigger yeah i was i was surprised too well i got i got there a little early and i'm like okay I'll, i'm in omaha of course i'm gonna hit a couple of antique stores while i'm here not to buy anything <laughs> Not buying tools. I was. I took a bunch of pictures of furniture. I I do it now more for inspiration than anything mm-hmm. for for magazine projects. But it took me like from the time I hit Omaha proper to where the first antique store I wanted to hit, which happened to be the Brass Armadillo. It's a chain that we have here in Des Moines mm-hmm. too. But mm-hmm. it was like 35, 40 minutes on the other side of Omaha. Really? I mean, yeah, forty minutes in Des Moines gets you outside the city. So it was it was just kind of interesting. But what I find fascinating is that Omaha, with that volume of people, 1.6 million roughly, I'm sure somebody will fact check me on that number, but that's what these guys yesterday told me, so that's what I'm basing it off of. Um, they only have like 50, well, they have like 50 people at, four, between 30 and 50 people that join each meeting in person. I think the guild might have more members than that. Uh, maybe not. Des Moines, with Des Moines being a much smaller city, has like four times the number of woodworkers. Really? So I guess, yeah. So I guess this is kind of my like little becking call to everybody. If you're not part of your local guild, you might as well do it. Like you might as well join it because they're cool people. Um, to be honest with you, a lot of them offer discounts locally. So I know like the Kansas City Guild is huge. Yeah. Yeah, like the Kansas City Woodworkers Guild is like sixteen hundred people. It's it's massive. But I've been told from people within the Des Moines Woodworker or the, the Kansas City Woodworkers Guild that a lot of people just join the guild because they get like twenty percent off at certain stores and it pays for itself mm-hmm. and then some, which is fine. Um, but you're helping support the guild and, and those people that are going to the meetings and stuff. So Join your local guilds, man. Don't be a bum. 
Plus, they got the best snacks. That's what I hear. Oh, yeah. Oh, completely. <laughs> Plus coffee? Come on. Yeah. So in these meetings, so. have a lot of them gone virtual or have a virtual op option now? They, that... they did. Yeah. So they did during COVID. Yeah. So a lot of the guilds went virtual. Um, now, Omaha is a smaller guild, so they don't have the capacity necessarily to, to stream it and broadcast it to people, which is fine. And I think, you know, withstanding people's opinions, I think most people are over the COVID thing. I think most people are over the Yeah, but I'm saying if, like, so, if you're out of town and don't have means to get to your yeah. local guild. Yeah, or local. Um, there was a couple of guys... Yeah, there was a couple of guys. I mean, it's it's a good point because there was a couple of guys at dinner that met us for dinner that were like, hey, I have to go, you know, pick up kids or something, you know, because we met pretty early for dinner. Um, so they had to go mm -hmm. pick up kids and stuff. And it's like, you know, I have to watch my kids tonight, so I can't join the meeting. But it's like, oh, yeah, if you were at home, you could join on the mm -hmm. computer. So I think a lot of them have. I don't know if they'll keep it up. I would like to think that they would. Um, I know the a lot of the AAW, not necessarily AAW, but wood turners in general went to like online demos. They call them IRDs, um, interactive remote demonstrations. So it's more of, it's not a pre-recorded thing. It's more like our Woodsmith seminars where it's yeah. like mm -hmm. people watch live and they can ask questions. They can be like, hey, can you hold that tool up so I can see it? You know, that type of thing. So not saying that we at Woodsmith were innovators, but we started Stop. that trend eight years no. ago. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we invented uh, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other thing I had I was thinking about is so we have a lot of I don't know if we talked about this, John. We might have talked about this. Um, so right now we are in the process of reducing our office footprint at work. So right now, Becky is sitting in what used to be Phil's office, mm -hmm. right? We have decided that because everybody's working from home, everybody's working remotely, that we wanted to um, kind of downsize. It didn't make sense to, to lease a large office space for a lot of money every year. Um, so what that means is we are um, clearing out and getting rid of a lot of furniture and magazine projects that have been built over the last 35 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've done this a few times when we scaled down stuff. Um, and it's kind of cool. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'd love to buy a project. Yeah. But facilitating a sale outside of the company is very hard because then somebody has to be here to meet somebody to pick it up. And it's just so we, we do it inner within the company. And we do that, um, it's kind of a, a benefit to the employees. They're like, hey, oh, you can buy a really nice piece of furniture for dirt cheap um, compared to what you, you buy it for. Um, Becky, have you bought anything from these sales we've done? Yes, and I have to confess that there's a secret to our projects <laughs> that may not be well known. Not all of our projects are how they appear in the magazine. Sometimes. <laughs> No. Sometimes. Wow. After they've been built, we realize that something isn't functional or uh, maybe we didn't finish the back of a piece or it, maybe it's been dropped or, you know, just say. <laughs> Sometimes we have to go back. I feel like that was a jab at us, yeah. John. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we have to. Two of, the two of the three people here might have dropped, you know, <laughs> A sideboard in the parking lot. No, but sometimes uh, the designers do go back to the drawing boards and have to reconfigure something after it's been built because it just doesn't function the way that they thought it would as it's been built. So what we get in the magazine is a more defined, a more... When we say it's shop tested, we mean it. Like, we've built it, we've been through it. Yeah. And by we, I mean... Mm -hmm them because I had nothing to do with the actual building. But so yes, we get the perks of having this nice furniture, but you know, sometimes it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with and our, our build process. Yeah. 
Yeah. Our well, and our build process for Woodsmith in particular um, is very it's very thought out. Mm-hmm. The designers design the 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 project in a CAD program, and then either the designer or one of our builders builds it and makes notes during the build process. Like, oh, hey, John, you have this as a dado, a through dado, but um, through the front, but you can't do that because of you know this or whatever. Or I changed this part size is wrong dimension in the CAD program. So that type of thing happens. Now, I think, Becky, when your dad was here, um, he left probably five years ago. Is that about right? Mm, I, it was right before I yeah. started. 2017, yeah. yeah. A little over five years yeah. ago, maybe. Yep. Um, now, when your dad was here, um, and your dad was basically a head of design, right? Um, if some, a lot of the times, there was much larger staff back then. Yes. So there was a lot more capacity for these these projects. So a lot of the times, a project would be built actually twice. Oh yeah, um, or more. Right. If Ted, if Ted, or more, yeah. If Ted had a designer that designed a project, it got built, and it's like, oh, I should adjust these few things. Your dad would say, "Hey, okay, cool. There's your prototype. Go build another yeah. one." Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and and that happens. That happened a lot. Um, there are some instances, and I think this is what you're getting at, is there are some instances where there just wasn't time to do that. Yeah. Like, or, or like, hey, we have, we have to, the only time we have photography booked is this day. So this needs to be ready for then. So you know what? The back of the cabinet, you're not going to see it in the photos. Is not going to be finished? Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be on there, but it's not going to have lacquer applied to the back or something yeah. like that. And I don't know if that's so. what you were getting to when you were saying that us employees get the benefit of these oh, no, no, furniture, no, I mean, but. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, I mean, we get we get the benefit of these being handmade pieces of furniture that are better than anything you could buy. Mm-hmm. And we, we are able to buy them very inexpensively, generally. Um, mm-hmm. But no, like, have you have you bought anything, Becky, from this last sale that we're doing right now? I didn't. No. no. John, you've bought a couple things, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I bought the um, Harvey Ellis drop front desk. Okay. The most recent one. And I'd say to Becky's point is, um, like, and like you said, the, a lot of these projects have been around for decades cause, just because we've held on to them. So like some of them might be a table that Garden Gate left some plants on and left some water rings yeah. on. And so it's more likely that they've been around for a while and not taken care of or abused that they might need a little work. But um, I think recently we've been better about uh, letting some of the newer stuff go. Uh, oh yeah. Cause just cause we don't have the room to hang on to it. Like we used to, I mean, we used to hang on to every single project. It was very yep. rare that stuff would come up for auction. So uh, I think some of the newer stuff is, you know, really pristine and and whatnot. Oh, yeah. but, but like Becky said, well, the, uh, some of the stuff we we do some weird, complicated stuff, and um, the first build is kind of a prototype, and we figure stuff out. Yeah, growing up, my household was go, full so. of prototypes. Like <laughs> everything yes. had, not to mock my dad, but had screw holes that came through or you know, things that just had a little bit of a lean to it for (laughs) whatever reason. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess what I was getting at with that question is now I bought two things, um, out of these sales we've done. Um, and it's a little weird because every, almost everybody that works here, has the capacity to build any of our projects. I mean, we, we've done that really well. We have we have surrounded ourselves with some of the best craftsmen in the world, right? Um, so everybody has the ability to build these if they wished. Now, time and materials and time is generally a limiting factor and the necessity of some of them. It's like, well, you know what, do I really need that? Probably not, but it would look good in the spare bedroom. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's that type of thing, I think. Um, but what I, I've bought two items from these last auctions. I'm looking at them right now. There's a, uh, a curly maple, it's a curly maple tool 
like heirloom tool chest. It has swing out doors. Um, I'll put a picture on the show notes page. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. It's one of those that over the probably 20 years that it's been built, it's set up in uh, the Woodsmith area on a table and expansion and contraction has kind of taken a toll on the top. So the top board, what used to be a really nice, you know, 14 inch wide top that is curly maple and it's dyed and it's it's beautiful. Now has a couple splits in it because of expansion and contraction. Um, and then I bought a really nice oak tool cabinet. It's um, it's like a two, four, six, seven, seven drawer tool cabinet with a pair of doors on the bottom. And I bought that to house all my lathe tools. And I like it because it's it's really smooth. Um, right now in the in the shop, I bought a general um, which is the the harbor freight toolbox brand so i bought a general toolbox i was putting all my lathe tools in um back at the lathe in in our shop at work and i found that shavings stick to it like there's enough stuff that protrudes on it that like after i'm done i turn around and there's just i mean it looks like cousin it you know what i mean like there's Mm -hmm. just stuff all over it so i like this one because it's smooth but the main reason that i haven't bought any furniture and i want your guys's opinion on this and i i think i know what becky's answer is going to be but do you guys in your house have a certain furniture style or is it just a cluster of every different furniture style kind of what you had at the time or what you what you've got from work or do you guys have a style that do you guys want your furniture style in your house to be cohesive and the same style everywhere? Or do you care if it's a mix and match thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I haven't bid on a lot of stuff just cause it's like, these are one off pieces. So if I put it in my house, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb or, I mean, like there was a really nice craftsman dresser in this last auction that I designed, but I don't have the rest of the, that, uh, furniture suite Set. so it's just yeah. kind of a, like a one off piece so it's like mm, do I need just a onesie twosies of, of things or like yeah we don't have like a full living room set or full bedroom set at any one time so that's kind of you know the hesitation on buying some of this stuff but you know there are just like one or, or, or two of, of things that kind of stand alone that then you know might bid on it a little bit more that way but so that's yeah just like you said is a little bit of hesitation on on bidding some some of that nicer furniture uh yeah my answer is as logan expects expected (laughs) kind of a hodgepodge um not necessarily by choice part of it is what's been handed down to me um and then what's available at work but i would like my house to be cohesive uh a lot of it is just space and opportunity. Of course, I'm going to take the nice furniture that comes up at work, but yeah, well, and it was it's it's not more of a it's not a criticism. It was just more of a question on because I know a lot of people that are by choice. They don't want a certain style. They yeah. like every style. Like they don't want a certain style. I could see different styles in different rooms. Like my whole house doesn't have to be the same style. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. and and see, and that's kind of where I have. Um, tried to limit myself on some of these things. Like I've, I've bought a couple things in the past sales we've had that are kind of like in the spare bedroom. It's like I bought a, uh, it used to be my shop. It was a, oh God, I don't know if I call it like a federal style bookcase. It had two drawers on the bottom and then it sat in the entryway of 2200. Um, I bought that cause it was like 40 bucks and it's solid cherry. It matches nothing in my house and it annoys the crap out of me. Like, <laughs> And, and I, and I, Becky has been in my house and she knows, like I have a very minimalistic type atmosphere in my house. It's, mm-hmm. and I want the furniture to all match and it drives me nuts when it doesn't. Like I have this, it, it, it's a mental disorder I have, like I need mm-hmm. it to match. So it, like right now it's, it's kind of stuck in the spare bedroom. I also have a. I don't know what it was called. And I don't know if it was a woodsmith or if it was a shop notes or it might have been a workbench project. It's that like ladder rack that leads up against the wall and it has like mm-hmm. almost like drawer boxes on it. Uh, 
but that's all in there and it's just like that room it gives me anxiety every time i walk in <laughs> so yeah yeah i just yeah that, i didn't know if what your guys opinions are on that so. yeah the other thing is is that we're asked not to resale these uh we sell the projects that were built for the magazine. So it's kind of a responsibility yeah. to like, I have to hang on to this or yeah, I don't know what the, <laughs> the period for, yeah. for hanging on to a piece is like, you know, the statue of years, limitations like, is yeah. It's like after 10 years, can I let it go? Or do I have to like keep handing this down yeah. throughout the, yeah. the history of my family to, to hang on to forever. So. Well, like Becky, you have a, coffee table mm -hmm. right that that i'm buying for my brother from you um you got that at, our, at one of our I sales i don't right? remember my it was at my or parents that... house for a long time so i assume it did eventually oh was or... it okay sure or was it a ted was it a, was it a ted krylicek uh uh prototype <laughs> he was storing it for yes. the magazine that's yeah <laughs> I think it's... also known yes. as he jacked it. He stole it. it. <laughs> he was storing it rent free. Yeah. He yes. Did not charge any rent. And then I think they were going to sell it. And I was like, no, no, I'll take it. Even though I had zero room for it. So it's just been in my basement yeah. sitting along the wall. Yeah. This episode of the shop notes podcast is brought to you by Woodcraft supply. Since 1928, Woodcraft has been outfitting woodworkers and their shops with everything they need and want. Whether you're looking for the best tools or the most amazing woods for your project, Woodcraft's been helping you make wood work for more than 90 years. So visit woodcraft.com or shop in one of more than their 70 stores nationwide. Then go make something cool. Yeah. So there is one thing still in the office that I didn't take picture of because I assume that Becky's going to want them. So I'm, I'm just assuming that they're going to go in Becky's car. Like, like you're looking at me like you don't know. Like, okay, maybe you don't want them. I don't. Because <laughs> I have – every time Becky has been to my house for a photo shoot, she's always like, you need stuff on your walls. Like, yes. she doesn't like my bare walls that I have. Mm. Um, so I picture Becky's house being the walls are full of stuff. Now I don't know if that's right. Oh. Like I don't know if that's accurate. Yes, like, I, I've lots seen your of stuff in line, yes, waiting yeah, to like, go up on the walls because I don't so, have enough walls. <laughs> okay, so I would assume that you would want the shadow boxes. Yeah, but I don't know if I want them for our office across the street. Mm. Okay, okay, that's fair. Or and for props seems... for future. Yeah. So we made those, um, how long ago was that, Becky? I mean, it had to have been two years ago, right? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, it was um, pre-COVID, it seems like. Just before yeah. all that, end of 2019, maybe. And, yeah, and we, like, I thought I thought Becky did a fantastic job propping them. They were, like, propped Thank with, you. like, yeah, they were, like, I mean, it was, like, so they're deep shadow box. Uh, they're not super deep. They're, like, what, two inch deep, maybe? shadow boxes yeah, there's a set of three right. of them they have a crackled finish on them and they're white white and gray crackle um a black felt or leather in the back and becky propped them with like kind of like scientific type things like little twigs and you know little names Earthy. and stuff and yeah yeah and they looked really great and i always thought those would be really cool and I was kind of wanting to buy them or build. I mean, it's one of those things like I don't want to take it from somebody in the office that could use it or if we're going to use it for props. Like, I could build them if I no, like if I want to build it. them, I build them. Put them in your house. <laughs> it's, well, <laughs> see, what I would like right to here. put in them. What I think, <laughs> what I would like to put in them, is they'd be really cool with like my Arrowhead collection. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the the Indian Arrowheads I have, like that would be super cool. Yeah. Um, and with me building a shop and putting an office in there, I feel like that office is my space. Like I can, my wife has no say of what goes in that office. So it's like, <laughs> I can put what I, my deer heads can go on the wall, everything. It's like, oh, this is gonna be so awesome. Um, so it's like yeah. those type of display things that my wife doesn't want that I can finally put up. Yep. Cool fishing yes. lures. Well, would thank be, you for the compliment. Would be nice for the shadow boxes too. Oh yeah, some yeah vintage fishing lures. That'd be cool. And I have a bunch of them that I got from my grandpa. So mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that was one of the first things that I propped. Yeah. So speaking, really? Yeah. Oh. Wow! Congratulations, Becky. It's a collector's piece. Thanks, John. <laughs> so, yeah, the other thing I was going to say uh, with these auctions is one of the faux pas is buying stuff and then not taking it home because the point is to clear out space. <laughs> so I'll admit that I have yes. broken that rule. I think how, that I bought a unfinished. <sighs> Uh, rolling page was that just from last season of this TV show or like two, two I seasons ago? Yeah. Where it's this I big? I feel like we, I feel like we built that in the old studio, didn't we? No, did we? Oh I no! I think maybe. I, wow. I think we did. That's been around a while. <laughs> so yeah, so it's yeah. this big rolling tool cabinet pantry thing, and I don't know. At some of these auctions, I just get carried away trying to bid other people up, and I get <laughs> stuck with stuff. And I think I bought it. Um, thinking, oh, the, um, I bought it. I don't remember how much I bought it for, but it was for less than what the casters on it were. So it's like, oh, I could always just knock the casters off and use that for something else. And now it's no, just that cabinet is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. So it's just been kind of rolling around <laughs> hiding in the prop room and it's been uncovered now that we've been cleaning everything out and it's out in the open and everybody is, knows yeah, yeah. well uh, we have like your personal router table in the studio yeah too. i hid i hid <laughs> that there when i moved and yeah all this stuff's coming to light I mean, now so to be to be fair though i used it last or this week when i was yeah. building that little shaker side uh, i keep calling it a shaker side table it's like a splay leg splay leg table mm. um but i'm like i need a router table i don't trust the other one because I've had the collet get loose on our other router table in the photo studio. So it's like, you know what? Doyle's router table is going to earn its keep yep. right now. It's good so to have a spare router table. I started using it. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> That's funny. So we built that roll around tool cabinet. It was episode 13 of season 14. Okay. okay season so. 14 would have been the old studio, right? I have no idea. I've lost track. This is our second season we have filmed in this studio, I think. Yes. Uh, I don't know. It all blends know. together. It blend together. <laughs> so. It does. I know. It's been around a while. I know that much. So. <laughs> well, I mean, nobody's nobody's counting except right. for he actually just stuck his head into Becky's office. He was looking to for check me. On John's tool cabinet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm challenging you on this live, not so oh, live wow. podcast it, to finish it and in, get it out of the public. studio. Yeah, I think the deal was. So the prop. I was going to say that it's like, oh, when I move, when I get a new house, then I'll have room for it. Mm. And like, yeah, I did that six that, months ago yeah. and it's still sitting there. That's what I was going to say is. The problem is he bought that for his old house that they have since sold and moved out of. Yeah. So now it's like, what does he do with it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So. And my shop here is quickly filling up with like the watchmaker's cabinets in here. This new toolbox is in here. The rolling, the roll around tool chest mm -hmm. is in here. It's like, ooh. Did you I'm ever take get a little snug in here? Did you ever take your clamping cart home? No, that no, in the that's studio in the... too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So that one, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beg off on that one because the photo set I'm using for the popular woodworking photos right now, it needs something. It needed something on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right <laughs> now, it's set up. So I, I don't know if you walked through the photo studio this morning, Becky, but like that corner. I have been shooting straight back into the yellow and, and barnwood wall. I've I pivoted the bench for this build. So now I'm shooting into the corner. So now you have the bench in front. You have that tall tool cabinet that was by, oh gosh, Steve built it. It has that, the, the maple doors. Um, that's on the left-hand side. Then you have the clamp cart in the corner. And then on the right-hand side is like that green roll around cart with my curly maple toolbox on it. So it just makes a good backdrop for photos and stuff. Um, but yeah, well, and it's, see, it's that type of thing. And I think this is kind of probably where Becky, you're deciding to, to get rid of this coffee table is you get something in your space 
or you th you think in your head, oh, hey, this piece of furniture or this shop fixture or whatever it is would work really well for this particular thing. Mm -hmm. Like you, you fall in love with the idea of it until you actually put it in and implement it. And then you're like, yeah. mm, that's not what I wanted. Yeah. I mean, and I kind of like, so right now I'll swing my camera. I don't know if we'll be able to see. So right now that is how my ignore my messy shop. That's how my clamps are stored. Um, it was a shop notes project. Maybe it's just a, a, a wall mounted clamp rack and it's fine. Uh, but it's just fine. So I, when we decided to build that clamp cart for the TV show, I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll buy the plywood for that and I'll just take it home when I'm done. And after we built it and I got all my clamps on it, I'm like, mm, not what I want. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, it's one of those things. I don't know. Yeah. I'm also, I was inspired with John's challenge of last month of getting rid of stuff. And that's just the kind of mm. mood I'm in right now. So I'm just yeah. trying to purge everything in my house. So yeah, it's hard to see. I live stuff in, in that mood generally. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't. So this is new. I'm I'm trying to ride the high as long as I can. <laughs> <laughs> see, my wife hates that about me because I like you wouldn't know. I just spun my camera so you guys could see my shot. But like, I love getting rid of stuff. Like I love it mm -hmm. and my wife hates it because i'll get in a mood where i'll just start walking around the kitchen like throwing stuff in the garbage like and she's like no i wanted to keep that kid's picture like henry drew that for me <laughs> it's like well okay take a picture on your phone then yeah throw it in the garbage he'll draw another <laughs> like, one uh, he'll draw many more <laughs> so i don't know <sighs> i know i know I am, he wants me to have i'm changing yes i am surprised that you showed your shop because the one time I was at your house and you physically stopped me from seeing your shop. Oh yeah. Well, cause it's, it, I, I have not had a lot of time in here lately. Um, because if I did, it would not look like this. <laughs> I like right now, my anxiety level is at about 98 out of a hundred because I'm sitting in this disaster of a shop. Um, it drives me nuts. I can't stand it. Uh, do you I think, can't stand it. I, do you think a man's shop is like the physical of the inside of their brain? <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. It doesn't like to be a man's shop. It could be a woman's shop. Yeah. Too. Well, okay. Yeah. Come on. It's twenty twenty two. Um. No, we we talked about this a couple Did of. You? podcast ago well yeah um I listen to your podcast sorry. i don't know <laughs> that's all right you listen to it in real life every day yeah it's <laughs> true no it was a question phil had like does does your shop is your shop a snapshot of you and your life like that's that was kind of phil's question i think I'm, i might be paraphrasing it a little bit but yeah kind of i mean yes because like in my shop so i have you know these little figurines up here that I used to collect and paint when I was younger. You know, I got like, um, there's a fish mounted on the wall over there um, that my aunt caught at my grandpa and grandma's cabin. Um, I have over by the door, I'm not gonna spin around, but over by the door, I above the door, I have all my grandparents' license plates from their entire lives. Um, so like, I mean, yeah, I, you and know, like you said, it's Phil's question now, like 12 podcasts later. But like you said, it's but, where your wife can't tell you what you can and can't have. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and so it's it, your not space. Not to make my wife sound like she, yeah, not to make my wife sound like she, she dictates what we have in her house, but you know, we both live here, so we both have a say in it. Um, I'm a very, like going back to the furniture style thing. I'm a very traditional, like I love like traditional form, traditional furniture styles. I, not, I'm not gonna say like, I want, you know, 17th century Queen Anne high boys everywhere in my house, cause that's not my style. But I'm very into like the shaker style, like the very simplistic shaker style. I love that, love that look. And my wife passively allows that. 
but we've talked before that you know my wife also likes painted furniture which is not necessarily my style mm-hmm. but you know I don't know I was a little surprised that one of the last pieces we sold I don't think it's actually been in the magazine yet it actually hasn't hit newsstand yet is the Nakashima inspired cabinet mm-hmm. um, it is a Bahut cabinet um it's a it's a big piece it's i don't know four foot wide probably five foot tall and a foot and a half two foot deep it's a large in i want to say it's in like an imposing piece of furniture but it's a large piece of piece of furniture and she was very interested in that um not to the point where we we're gonna beat chris schlemmer out <laughs> on it on the auctions but um I was a little, a little taken mm-hmm. back by that, but yeah. See, that's one of those pieces of furniture that can kind of stand on its own and be different. I feel like it doesn't have to match the yes. rest of your furniture or your rest of your style. It's kind of a statement piece, so it's kind of cool that way that you could just get that and put it somewhere and it can stand on its own. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have a piece of furniture in your house that is like that or? Maybe not, maybe not like a standalone piece, but do you have a piece of furniture in your houses that it's like, you know, no matter where I live, no matter, you know, how rich or poor I am, I'm going to keep this piece mm-hmm. of furniture forever. Do you guys have one of those? Uh, I don't think I do right now. I'm kind of in uh, flux right now, I guess, with with my furniture between moving and stuff. and Your furniture fluid? Yeah. That's, that's how I would define okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, as opposite of woodworking as this is, we have our dining room table is like a six person table and it's a got a stainless steel top and we, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. We move it around our house. It's either our dining room table or it's an extra table in our kitchen because our kitchen has zero counter space in it. Um, but I think we will always find a place for it in our house and it's, yeah, it's just one of those pieces that we use. Cool. Where where did it come from? Homemakers. <laughs> okay, I mean that's fair. No, I was that's fair. I just didn't know if it was like a like something you got somewhere special. I mean, homemakers is pretty special. Right. Don't get me wrong. But no, it's a stainless steel but. piece that we just okay. We'll always make it work. <laughs> Okay, so do you see yourself um, thirty years from now still having that oh, yeah. table? I know, I know that's a, kind of a loaded question. Okay, um, I, and I ask that because my parents have a table that they bought. Oh gosh, had to have been twenty five years ago. It was like this ultra modern, like mid nineties table. It has a big round glass top, just like John just mm. bought. Cool. Uh, but it has this like kind of, yeah, kind of like this, this waterfall type steel base to it. And they've always liked it. I think they, they're sentimental with it because every time they get a new dog, when the dog's a puppy, they always curl up inside the base. You know what I mean? So there's a picture of every dog my parents have ever had curled up inside the base. Um, and I've moved that stupid table for my parents like eight times. And they just keep hanging on to it. Now, my mom's asked me to build her a table. So right now I have lumber at the kiln for my mom's table from my grandparents' house, um, from a tree from their house. But it's it's just, it's interesting because my I think my mom was in that same group, kind of like you, Betty, like, well, I'll always make room for this table. Mm-hmm. But now she's moved on from it. So it, it just is kind of fascinating to me that it's like, oh, I'm really in love with this table now. You know, I don't know if I can see myself using it in 20 years or 30 years, or if that's, it is what it is. That's what you're going to have. I think we'll always have a purpose for it, whether it's outside in the garage, in the basement. Yep. Um, see, I would say before, if I was going to pick one piece of furniture from my house, I would, I would have said my bed, the sleigh bed that I built a couple of years ago. Um, but now I think I would go to the dining room table. You know, not saying that I feel like every piece of furniture I build, the next one's just a little bit better than the last Mm -hmm. piece. Um, You know, just kind of as a woodworking journey, I'm getting really philosophical and deep here. But like, 
like to me that's like oh you know what that turned out exactly how i wanted it to turn out so like like the the bed there's little oddities that i'm like yeah i could see that but nobody else can the table i'm like nothing wrong with it like i mean there's 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 it's handmade still yeah but there's it turned out exactly how i pictured in my head so i'm like that's the piece i would keep if i was going to choose one Mm -hmm. and if your kids love you they will also keep it because their dad made it. That's oh. So what happens if they get rid of it then? Uh, Does that mean they don't love me? Or they just uh, inherited your need to throw things away, just mm-hmm. like you throw Henry's That's art true. piece That's away. That's fair. Uh, yeah, well, I take pictures <laughs> of them though. Like I have a phone full of pictures. Mm-hmm. You know, but well, I mean, and it's one of those things that that table is fairly large it's 92 inches long so it's a pretty big table like there there will probably be a point where it doesn't my wife and i might move to a house that it when we don't have kids anymore we don't need a table that big so it might you know again right now in this snapshot of time in my life that's when i keep is it the same in 20 years i don't know or is is henry gonna be a little turd and decide he's gonna scratch it up with a pen or something maybe i don't know but you know what? That's part of its story. Mm-hmm. I don't care. So. Oh, speaking of stories and tables, I have to tell you my parents' story. Um, so when my parents or when my parents first met each other and started dating, my mom uh, invited my dad over for dinner. All she had were uh, uh, sofa table or like uh, TV trays. Sorry, mm-hmm. and. So this was their first date. My dad's like, I'm never going to eat on a TV tray ever again. And so he worked for Woodsmith at this time. And he's uh, one of, I couldn't even tell you what issue, but an old, 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 old table he built for my mom as their second date. And to this day, they still have that table. So it's their love story table. You've still eaten at it. And to go with what you said, there's totally nail polish and kids scraping because it was my craft table oh, yeah. when I was little. And he just yeah. sanded it down and resurfaced well, and it. And it continues their story. Yeah. And Phil's mentioned that before, like his table, same thing. He has, um, he built his table for his wife, I think for a, a wedding present. And it's like, you could see you know, where kids have spilled stuff and it's part of the story, yeah. man. Like don't sweat it. So, all right. Well, John exited stage left. So I think that means we're done. So once again, I'd like to sh- thank this episode's sponsor, Woodcraft. Uh, this episode of the Shop Notes podcast is brought to you by Woodcraft Supply. Since 1928, Woodcraft has been outfitting woodworkers and their shops with everything woodworkers want. Whether you're looking for the world's best tools or the most amazing wood for your projects. Woodcraft has been helping you make wood work for more than 90 years. Visit woodcraft.com or visit one of their stores that you can find nationwide. Then go make something cool. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up this episode. So any parting words of wisdom? (laughs) No? Keep everything. All right. My parting (laughs) words of wisdom will be... (laughs) My parting words of wisdom are if you're bound if you're going to scoop poop in flip flops, you're bound to have a crappy day. That's it. I'm leaving it there. Alright, we'll see you guys next time. It's just Unitarian and Cool. Is that the word I yeah. mean? Hold on. Utilitarian. Hold on, Nate. Utilitarian. Utilitarian. Okay. There you go. Yep, that's yep. right. We knew. It's yep. just utilitarian. We, we work with this every day, people. <laughs> we work. <laughs> yeah, speak Becky. We speak Becky. <laughs> <laughs>